It fits. Hi. It looks great on you, sweetie. And I knew it was the perfect size. Why were you guys way the hell up in dairy anyway? Well, these two decided to let me drive. And since I actually have a sense of adventure, I decided that we were going to stop and hang at this sort of legendary bar called The Falcon. It was a really cool place. Apparently the guy that opened it ran it for years before he even knew it was a gay bar. <laughs> and then he just didn't care. It was a great time. And Rose, your bar is even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yet you guys are just too cool to stay here. My point exactly. Look, you're the one who only has bed and breakfast for two, and we know that these lovebirds need their privacy. I offered for you to stay in my apartment. One bed, sweetie. As much as we'd love to all have that experience on our resume, our room awaits. And the weather is getting worse. You'd never go back. But seriously, be safe. It's turning to freezing rain any minute. Okay, Mom. <laughs> All right. Do you have your coat? Where's, where's your coat, honey? Oh, you've got it. Okay. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> Take care. Be careful. Bye, Bye love. Just... Another round, Booth? Well, I guess I could pony up for another since you went and twisted my arm. <laughs> I'm a hell of a salesman. That's uh, some more sangria for you, too? Oh, hell. Why not? I think it's early enough for one more, darling. You got it, hon. The way it's coming down, maybe several more? Don't encourage them. <laughs> and they say it's gonna be the worst rainstorm to hit Maine since the summer of 85. It's already knocking down lies not far from here and supposedly it's not letting up. Booth, I'm gonna set up your cot in the ale real quick, just guard the place until I get back. <laughs> Do you stay here often? What? Um, no. No, I mean, very rarely. Only when the storms and roads are really bad. I won't risk driving on nights like that. Me and her dad, we go way back. When our dads used to work in the old mill, over in Ludlow. Yeah. I come in quite a bit. It's a quiet, private bar. Membership and confirmed guests of the b, &B only. So, it's a safe place. Truly safe, you gotta be buzzed in. It's a invitation only. So, whenever the weather's really bad or it's a bit too dark, Rose here uh, fixes up a cot for me. Make sure I won't chance a trip. Get myself hurt. It's very nice of you. Booth's a good man. And he's like an uncle to me. And we tend to just look out for each other around here. And bonus, he knows just about everything there is to know about Southern Maine. Did he tell you that famous author who wrote Conway's Daughter is from around here? Pure trash, by the way. Good trash. Fair enough. It's the as I lay dying of trash. Well, that still puts him second to Longfellow as far as main authors go. You'll have to forgive our friend Booth here. He's basically a landmark. Beloved. Feared. Hated. History teacher at Cumberland Consolidated. Some people are set in their ways. Old Booth here is set in his place. In any case, Booth is always welcome here. I'd rather him be someplace safe than take some stupid risk. How far do you live from here, Mr. Booth? Please, just Booth. It's about a three minute walk. Have one for the road, Booth. I'm gonna shut her down. Was you born in a barn? My wife. My wife. My daughter. Holy Joe. Close the door, Booth, would you? Fain it. Booth. Get the special brandy off the back bar, will ya? Sadie, 
Hand me that water just in case. Hey. Pour a cap full. Just a cap? Yeah, that stuff's dynamite. Ain't no sense in overloading his car. Roll him over. Straight down the hatch. <coughs> Hold on to it, friend. <coughs> it's hard to come by. Better. All right. My wife and my daughter, they're, they're out in the storm. From the way you came in, I didn't figure they were home watching TV. Come on, everybody. Give us a hand. <coughs> Can you feel your toes, friend? We've got to get you warm. Now, why in God's name did you drive up here in the height of a blizzard like this? Are your wife and daughter dressed for this weather, or...? Listen, friend. Another 15 minutes out in that storm, you'd have been frozen dead, waiting for Billy Larrabee to come by and plow you out or over. No one's going to let anything bad happen to your wife or your little girl. We look out for each other around here. Now think hard. Where did you go off the road? About six miles. Six miles back. You sure? Six miles? Pretty sure, yeah. I, I, I checked the odometer when I came through town. It's following the damn directions the whole way from Princeton. We're not from here, we're from Jersey. I'm here to visit my wife's sister in, uh, in Cumberland. First time in Maine, first time visiting her. Fucking New Jersey. Six miles, you're sure? Did you make a right turn? A right, yeah, yeah, my wife, she, yeah. Did you see a sign? Of course I did, it was on the damn directions. Here, right here. Take Jointner Avenue through Jerusalem's lot to the 295 entrance ramp. Isn't that right? What? Booth, get on the phone. Call the sheriff. What's wrong with you guys? Looks like you saw a ghost. No. No ghosts in the lot, mister. Did you tell him to stay in the car? Of course I did. I'm not insane. No. No. You've done everything you should do. It's just, we're just trying to get a firm grip on the situation here. Now, what's your name, friend, for the sheriff? Lumley. Gerard Lumley. <sighs> Phone's dead. Lines must be down. I can't think of a way to get a hold of Sheriff or Billy if the phones are down. There's no telling when the hell he'd want to be out this way again. Well, haven't any of you got a car? I mean, Janie's got to run the engine to keep the heater going, and I had about a, a quarter tank of gas, and it took me about two hours to get over here. I mean, please, someone's got to help me! Son, don't go doing something you're going to regret. Why that fucking idiot have to move the fucking maid? She hasn't visited the fucking state before. All right, there's a, there, there must be something we can do. Where's the nearest gas station? They have to have a, a, a tow truck or something. The nearest gas station is in Fallman Center. That's damn near three miles down the road, opposite the way you came. Well, thank you for giving me my second win and sending me in the right direction. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> and thank you, miss, for your concern. It won't be open. What are you saying? What it's trying to tell you is that the station in the center there belongs to Billy Larrabee. The same Billy we mentioned before. And Billy's out there driving his plow. Which in a blizzard like this is priority number one. And a hell of a lot more important than playing pump jockey to a bunch of cars that can't even get on the road tonight. There's things we gotta think about so we can get your wife and little girl back. 
What we know for damn sure is that if you go flying out into that bitch of a storm, there's a very good chance that car of yours will be the last place your family ever chooses to step into. Now sit down before you give yourself a hemorrhage. We're gonna figure this out, but you need to stop getting in the way. Are you telling me that there isn't, that we can't, there's, there's nothing? You have to understand, rushing out and getting yourself stuck in a second car, somewhere between here and there, isn't going to help your family. Nobody's telling you nothing. So stop jumping to conclusions. Just sit and let us have a think. What is this town, Jerusalem's lot? Jerusalem's lot burned out about two years back. And they never rebuilt? It appears that way. Well, you can't just leave them out there. Took. Took what they've been got at. That may be, but we don't know it for sure. And if they haven't, well, I can just sit by telling myself there's nothing we could have done without making sure it's true. Now I got my pocket Bible on the shelf there. You still wear your Pope's medal? You fucking serious? I'm not mocking your faith. I wasn't accusing you of that. Are you mocking our concern for the lot? No. No, no, no. Let me have my say. We're not saying any of that shit about the lot is true. There are all kinds of reasons folks go missing. Hell, 76 wasn't even the first time the lot burned down. The chances of you being attacked by a bear when out deer hunting are thousands to one. Still, folks carry their sidearms and bear spray. It's the sensible thing to do. Now, I have my faith the same as you. And I know there's no bear waiting to kill me in these woods. Still, I'm prepared for the danger just the same because it's sensible. Now I'm bringing my Bible and I'm giving Booth here my cross. No. No, keep it. Take mine. Uncle Tu gave it to me. And most folk who uh, lived around the lot wore, um, still wear, I suppose, something. Crucifix, St. Christopher medal, rosary, pocket Bible, something like that. They wear something with religious, spiritual, or some other supposed power. You see, because uh, about two years before Lumley uh, stumbled uh, half frozen to took his bar in the span of one dark October month. I basically lived at Tookie's. <laughs> Her uh, husband gave me my first job. Uh, uh, we always stayed friends. Uh, so when he died, I uh, wanted to help his wife whenever I could. Sometimes, uh, very late at night, uh, when there's just a few regulars drawn up around Tookie's fire, people would talk about it. How the lot went bad. You see, people in the lot 
just started to disappear. First, uh, just a few. But I was alarming enough. And a few more. Then a whole slew of talk just... simply vanished. A bunch of businesses suddenly shut down. Permanently. All the schools closed. The whole town stood empty for most of a year. And then, the whole damn lot burned flat. <laughs> that, that was at the end of a long, dry fall. Uh, uh, most people figured it started up around the old Marston house, up top the big hill overlooking Joyner Avenue. Uh, except, no one knows how it started. Not to this day. <laughs> and the whole lot burned out of control for three full days. After that, for a time, things were better. And then they started again. I only heard the word vampires mentioned once. It's this crazy old asshole, uh, pulp truck driver named Richie Bassina from over Freeport Way. He came to Tookie's one night. He, he, he was pretty damn liquored up. All I know is that nobody should go up there because there is something... Oh, Jesus Christ! Are you all so damn afraid to say it out loud? Vampires. That's what y'all thinking, ain't it? <laughs> Jesus Christ in a jumped-up, chariot-driven sidecar. I'm like a bunch of kids scared of the fucking movies! Holy shit. Holy shit, you... You idiots actually believe it. <gasps> Fuck me running. <sighs> you wanna know what's down in Salem's Lot? You want me to tell you? You want me to tell you what's down there? Yeah, tell me, tell me, Richie. Do tell us, Richie. You have the floor. What you got down there is your basic pack of wild dogs. That's what you got. And that and a hell of a lot of old women who just love to have a spooky story to pass back and forth. No offense, Mrs. Tooklander. Richie, hon, if men like you offended me, I would have been put in a padded room years ago. Well, for 80 bucks, I'd spend the night there and whatever's left of that fucking house up on that hill, one you're all so worried about? Huh? Well, how about it? Anyone want to put it up? Richie, nobody thinks there's a vampire waiting up there to tear you up, okay? But the lights are out, it's raining, the roads up there are shit, and the ruins of that house are so unstable, even a fucking sparrow wouldn't roost there. Most of us don't want to see you go up there and get yourself killed, trying to prove a point nobody's trying to make. We all know you're brave enough to do it. We all believe that. None of us truly believe there are bloodsuckers up there, unless, of course, that's where your creditors are making camp. <laughs> To hell with a bunch of you. I got my 410 in the truck and I'll stop anything in Falmouth, Cumberland, or Jerusalem's fucking lot. And that's where I'm going. Bunch of fucking idiots. Vampires. 
bunch of fucking wild dogs. What the fuck are you looking at? God damn it. What the fuck was that all about? That's the last time that anybody's gonna see Richie Messina. Dear God. He'll sober off and change his mind. He'll be back by closing time, pretending it was all a joke and asking for some whiskey. Well, Lamont had the right of that one because nobody ever saw Richie again. <laughs> oh. His wife told the state cops uh, that she thought He'd gone to Florida to be the collection agency. You could see the truth of it in her eyes. I was <laughs> sick, scared eyes. Uh, you know, uh, Rose is a trash author. Uh, he wrote this book. Uh, it was probably Air Dancer. And a character that says something close to, I hold the idea that we survive death in some fashion or other. It's hard to believe that such complicated and uh, occasionally wonderful beings in the end are simply wasted, tossed like litter to the roadside. I know we do survive death in certain forms. And that survival is uh, sometimes wasted, sometimes terrible, and sometimes no different than being thrown like trash down a storm drain. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, uh, not long after that night, where we watched Richard Messina go hell-bent for leather to the lot. His wife up and moved to Rhode Island. She had no family here except for Richie. Uh, maybe thought that was a uh, move for a fresh start, be close to family. I think that she moved away because she was afraid that Richie come after her some dark night. And I'm not the man to say that he wouldn't have. Ah, uh, put that away. This, uh, lonely guy, did you tell him what happened to Richie Messina? There wasn't time for that. We can't just leave him out there, Booth. Yeah, I know. You're a good man, Booth. I've got a four-wheel drive. I'll get it out, we'll go and try and find him. That's great. Why didn't you say so earlier? Mister. How about we stop standing you here and get going? You need to calm down and shut your mouth. And before you get the urge to open it again, you better remember it wasn't us who told you to turn onto an unplowed road in the middle of a goddamn blizzard. You have your know-nothing sister-in-law to thank for that. Second thing you better remember is that it's not just a goddamn blizzard we have to deal with. Main blizzard. You want to use your high beams, but you can't. You can see maybe 15 feet tops. Well, you drive on like that in a state of total concentration. And then you forget a few minutes later, you go right back to the goddamn highs. <laughs> uh, it, it is a stressful, hellish experience. The world around you vanishes, except for a small piece of snow-covered road right in front of you. Uh, I can live with the snow. Well, never bothered me none. 
It's the wind I don't like. And it picks up and begins to howl, driving the snows into a hundred weird flying shapes that sounded like all the hate and pain and fear in the world. <laughs> and the wind doesn't need snow to do that either. It just needs darkness. Clouds, rain, fog, some cover. Truth is, there's death in the throat of a dark, storm-blown wind. That kind of aggressive wind, it, it's, it's no sound to hear when you're uh, tucked away all cozy in your bed. Shutters bolted, doors locked. It's no sound to be listening to when you're out all on your own, struggling to find comfort, peace. And it's all that much worse when you're driving. God help us. We were driving smack in the Salem's lot. This, 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 this looks like a return, but I, 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 I don't see the sign. This is it. You can just see the sign there. Uh, oh, um, uh, Miss Tuklander, I, uh, I just want to apologize for being so short back there. I was, I was cold and worried and mad at myself, my fucking sister-in-law. So I, I just want to apologize and, and, and really just thank you. Don't thank us until we've got them in this car. Mr. Lumley, people around these parts are kind of superstitious about Salem's lot. If your people are in the car, why, that's fine. We'll pack them up and go back to my place, and tomorrow when the storm's over, Billy will be glad to yank your car out of here. But if they're not in the car... Not in the car? What do you mean? They're, 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 they're gonna be in the car? If they're not in the car, we're going to turn around and drive back to Falmouth Center and whistle for the sheriff. You're gonna be in the car, okay? One more thing, Mr. Lumley. If we see anybody out there, we don't talk to them. Even if they talk to us first. Do you understand? Just what are these superstitions? God, Booth, I think it's happened again. How did you know? Where are they? Where are they? What the hell is going on here? Huh? Francie's coat! Francie's crew! She can't be asked out of her coat! She'll freeze, Mr. Booth! She'll freeze to death! She's seven years old! Mr. Lumley! Please. Tracks. In the tracks, come on! Hello, ma'am. So kind of you to bring this woman's husband to her on a night like this. Janie was so worried. Jerry, darling. These nice people were helping us find you, and you came. They're so kind in this town. They made us feel so welcome. What about Francie? Oh, the little one? She's off having fun with her new friends. Say no. I think I knew you. I don't know. As for me, I feel like I haven't aged a day. 
husband, I do know you. And your husband, Herb, is his name? We would love to get to know you better. And Herb would love to see you. You can be with him again. Here. With us. My husband's dead. He had a nice Christian funeral. I was there. Oh, is he? <laughs> Tell me, did you check his coffin after his nice... Christian funeral? He's not one of you. You poor, sad woman. We all feel so sorry for your losses, your useless husband. Your youth. Your confidence. Now why don't you help me ensure that this lovely woman doesn't become a sad old spinster like you. Now kindly let her poor, stupid husband come down here and greet her. His wife isn't here any more than that hack rider who left you trapped here instead of kindly killing you. Oh, he tried. Coward staked me, but he missed the spot. Then his friends tossed my unconscious body into a fucking crate added some good-sized rocks, nailed it shut, and tossed it into the fucking river. It took a long, long time to get out of that box and crawl to shore. But being trapped underwater did save me from the inferno, and I was able to help the lot rebuild, in a manner of speaking. Good. Sue's fine. <laughs> but I have no need for a name. Summon your husband. Jerry. Very good.
I was 19 years ago. And I was no spring chicken then. Harriet took Lander died two years ago. Things in a lot go on pretty much the way they always have. If it took your eyes said anything about it, not even to Sadie when we got back. And me without her cross, she knew. You can tell by the look in her eye. She knew their fate. Every now and again, a hitchhiker or a camper will disappear out there someplace, up on a schoolyard hill or out near Harmony Hills Cemetery. Somebody will find a backpack or a paperback all swollen and bleached from the rain and snow. But never the people. I still dream about that night. Terrible dreams. Not about Lumley's wife so much, but about that little girl. And the way she smiled when she reached out her arms so I could pick her up. So, <laughs> so she could she 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 could give me a kiss. Whatever happened to Sadie? After that night. She was always talking about moving away, <laughs> so where she'd do it. Then one day, she didn't show. Her landlady said that uh, she had uh, packed up some stuff and moved out one night. She got out, made good on her word. Yeah. Yeah, I like to think so. I hope to God so. But I, I don't know for sure. I hate to think of the alternative. Lord knows I have enough dreams about it. I, I don't have to spend my waking life thinking much on it. But you know, I'm an old man now. The time's coming when dreams are done. Especially those dreams were a, a seven-year-old girl going on 26 now, but forever seven. That is a fucking doornail. I'm still seeking to take the life out of anyone she passes. Closing time. Thanks for the story. You're really staying here tonight? I am. I see as hell out there. I'm getting worse. It's really coming down. I don't go out in storms anymore. Never at night. <laughs> Rarely during the day. The way I figure it, storms give them great cover. Allows them to wander. For them, uh, having a good storm is like finding a, a narrow stretch of stream in a river during a salmon run. You can just reach in to surely grab it at least one of them. I mean, they'll never see it coming. They just focus on their mission, same way as you'd focus on your direction if you're out in a storm. You guys seriously leaving? Yeah, but we only have to walk around the back and up some stairs. Mm. Ooh. So, uh, <clears throat> what would you think of that guy's story? <sighs> Definitely creeped me out, and uh, I don't think I ever want to come back here again. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? Hmm? Uh, I think... 
I think we should go to bed. Oh, I think that's a great idea. 